Names of compounds can tell us a lot of things. In this video we are going to cover how to go from the formula of an ionic compound to the name of it and naming it properly using oxidation states. To properly name compounds from the ionic formulas, you need to first of all be familiar with um, Roman numerals. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You could probably get away with just learning up to six, but you might as well learn them all properly because they're coming useful at other points in life. And then you need to be familiar with learning assigning oxidation states. So if you haven't done that video yet, or if you're new to this and don't know how to assign oxidation states, I suggest you go and look at that video first. These are the ones down here that I'm going to name as examples for you. You might notice initially some of these look very similar, like iron sulfate and iron sulfate and tin oxide and tin oxide. But if we name them properly using um, oxidation states and with the Roman numerals in there, there shouldn't be any confusion to the actual formula. The first thing we need to do is assign oxidation states to everything. So oxygen is minus 2 and there are 4 of them, giving an overall contribution of minus 8. A sulphite iron has a minus 2 charge, so sulphur must be contributing plus 6, leaving iron to contribute a plus 2 charge, giving us iron 2, because that's the charge on the iron iron sulfate. Again with the next one we need to assign all our oxidation states. So oxygen is minus two and there are three of them giving us an overall contribution of minus six. A sulfate ion has a minus two charge which means sulfur in this circumstance is only contributing plus four and iron is still plus 2, giving us iron 2, sulphate 4. Tin oxide now. Now we know oxygen, majority of the time, is minus 2, giving us tin as plus 2, making this compound tin 2 oxide. Another tin oxide now, here we have oxygen that is minus 2 and there are two of them giving us overall minus 4 which means tin must be contributing a plus 4 making SnO2 tin 4 oxide. Iron chloride, chlorine is minus 1, there are two chlorines overall making minus 2 meaning iron must be contributing plus 2, making FeCl2 iron 2 chloride. Iron chloride again, except this time, um, chlorine is still minus 1, but we have 3 of them, giving an overall minus 3 charge, which means iron must have a plus 3 charge, making it iron three chloride. PbCl4 here, chlorine minus one times four, overall contribution of minus four, leaving lead at plus four, making it lead four chloride manganese hydroxide here and we have a hydroxide ion in. The overall charge on a hydroxide ion is minus one. You should know your ions. There are two of them giving us minus two as the overall charge which means manganese has to be contributing plus two. Making this manganese two hydroxide. Now uh, oxidation states are really really important when we are naming ions because transition metals have a variable oxidation state. I've shown you a few examples here. These are generally the most common ones but they are completely variable in their oxidation states. <laughs> 